All right. The last one. This is the last video I'm recording before I head off to NAC. Oh, man. I'm recording a lot of campaign videos over the last couple days. Anyway, here we are. End of Surya Varman. Narvan Napada. With the maritime rivals of the Empire crushed, Surya Varman set his sights on the mainland. As the war with the Tambralinga Srivijaya alliance had progressed, it had not escaped his attention that rivals closer to home had been plotting and wishing for his ruin. The rulers of the various Burmese and Cham kingdoms... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. They mixed up the maps. If you remember back to Surya of Arman 2, you can, you know, open the video. They had the wrong... They had the same thing, but with... This should be the from, you know, Surya of Arman 2, and the other one had, like, the, the Cham kingdoms and Burmese kingdoms and stuff. was unacceptable. Surya Varman's enemies may have been too intimidated to Yeah, like, definitely, definitely. They, they mixed up the maps. Surya Varman had no reservations about challenging his neighbors. It was high time that the Empire saw further expansion. The Mekong and Chow Phraya rivers snaked through rich, fertile lands held by decadent, unstable kingdoms ripe for conquest. Triumph would add yet another achievement to Surya Varman's legendary military record. All right. Choose one of the following two objectives. Defeat three of your five enemies. Hari Funka, Funchai, Hari Funchai, Lava Kingdom, Northern Cham, Southern Cham, and Khmer Rebels. Construct and defend a wonder. So, you know, defeat people or construct a wonder. And uh, the Srivijaya will periodically pay you installments of tribute, which is 500 gold every, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. Sword of Arman's army can support a pop limit of 200. You can see that uh, we have a huge army to start with. It's monsoon season in Southeast Asia. The turbulent conditions make it impossible to launch and maintain hulking siege ships. Although the majority of this combat in this scenario uh, will be land-based, the control of the water can be used to deadly effect. Most of the map will soon become a battleground. The southern portion, however, is a relatively safe area to build your economy. Mineral resources are somewhat scarce. Fortunately, you can rely, rely on the recently defeated Srivijaya for supplementary tributes. All right. So, Surya of Arman controls the heart of the Khmer Empire, placed primarily in the center of the map. You can see, like, we have a huge uh, base to work with. Although initially in a powerful position, uh, adversity will come swiftly for invaders and rebels alike. Uh, Hara Funchai holds two citadels to the northwest and field an army com almost comp composed entirely of light horsemen, so Arambai and Hussars and such. The Lava Kingdom is based in a mountain fortress to the far west of the map. They make infantry, skirmishers, and monks. They are also Burmese. Uh, the Northern Cham controls the coastal town of Intrapura to the northeast. Rattan archers, battle elephants, and halberdiers comprise their land forces, and they also build a small navy. These guys are obviously Vietnamese. And the Southern Cham are based in a set of bastions in the eastern coastline, and they have infantry and crossbowmen and a big navy. These guys are Malay. Oh boy, the Khmer rebels uh, have seized two military bases uh, guarding important river crossings north of the Khmer Empire. They've got swordsmen, ballista, and elephants. And finally, uh, Daiviet holds a fortress to the far north, watching the conflict in the south with much interest. Perhaps their cavalry and javelineers can be persuaded to attack some of our enemies. Whew! Bountiful land surrounds us, ripe for the taking! Oh boy, there is so much to do so quickly. Ah! Again, there's like a bajillion relics on this map, you know, give or take. Oh, whoops. Speaking of relics, there's actually an achievement in this scenario. I forget what it's called, but... Um... You have to collect all the relics on the map, so I'll try and do that. I'm so discombobulate. Like, you just have so much stuff you have to do, like, instantaneously.
die. Okay, there's also a relic over here. I forget how many relics there are on the map. There's a lot. Wait, why are you not attacking me? Build a CC over there. Because we don't actually have that many villagers. Some what? Four relics already? Five relics? That's a lot of relic. Die already! Alright. Let's get to work. Uh, first we're gonna go for Hari Funchai, because they're the most annoying. And we'll probably lose our entire army in the process. Because our army kind of sucks. <laughs> it's big, but it kind of sucks. Like, it's mostly, you know, pikemen and long swordsmen and stuff. Such a big army. It's like scattered everywhere. <laughs> My Orn Lutier multitasking is not sufficient. Yeah, these guys are annoying. They make a lot of Arambai and stuff. Um, also, uh, just like in, you know, every other scenario in this campaign, um, the enemies have unlimited resources. So you can see there's still plenty of relics on the map, because the Lavo Kingdom will also be uh, trying to scoop up some relics. Reminds, which reminds me, there's one relic on an island that we need to get. Well, I mean, we don't need to get it, but you guys, you guys get the idea. Guess we'll get Hal, but we have a ton of pikemen. I don't know how you guys got in here. Do your, do your best. Of course, everybody's in Imperial Age. The list of elephants are so freaking bad. <laughs> At least they were fixed in the most recent patch. At least as of recording this video. Hopefully I haven't lost- ah, I lost my entire navy, great. I need to get my relics, man! And of course, because our enemies are all Imperial Age, they all have probably Faith or Heresy or whatever. I think these guys are post him. Or maybe not. Maybe they. Because. Uh, of the Rajasivs, only uh, Malay have heresy, obviously. Otherwise, uh, heresy elephants would be a little OP. The relic's way over here to the east. Okay, our uh, army is kind of kaput. That is okay. Well, I mean, it's not great, but, you know, it's fine. Whoa! Ow. 
Obviously, we are under a lot of pressure from literally everybody. Oh yeah, and I guess I'm gonna go with the defeat enemies scenario because that's more fun. Damn it. Show Ornlu 18 food. I lost the transport ship. Yeah, I remember when I said we'd lose our entire army. We definitely did. It's probably hot to eat my dogs. Of course. Just like in the last scenario, towers with heated shot are so good against ships, man. Pretty feels good, man. And the keeps are just nice defensive tools anyway. You only have to worry about rams and such, and traps, obviously. Speaking of rams, convert them. Get them. Damn it. Yeah, it's kind of annoying that you start with such a huge um, military. But it's like a really crappy one because it's like, you know, swordsmen and stuff. But you don't start with a bunch of villagers or town centers or whatever. Oh boy. Do you have a market? say that this is hectic would be a bit of an understatement. Okay, let's try again. Collect the relic on the island. Elephants. Have okay upgrades, but not amazing. Please run into my castles and stuff. But you can see we have a ton of stone. Oh, didn't they say that mineral resources were scarce for something? Yeah, that's definitely not the case. Unfortunately, Khmer don't get arrow slits, otherwise these towers would be even more awesome. If you're wondering why I don't just build castles, uh, one, castles are more expensive and harder to uh, protect a large area, and two, they don't benefit as much from heated shot, so they're actually worse against ships, you know, per cost. Per unit cost, to use a good econ term. I lost another. Oh, you bet I lost another ship. It would. Okay. What? Can, can they not reach him or something? Not sure what's up with that, but our villager count is... Slowly climbing. Slowly. That's a lot of ships, but of course they don't get uh, cannon galleons either. Because it's the monsoon season, apparently. Curses. And, you know. 
Obviously, I'm a big fan of some building HP upgrades. But, uh, it's especially important, or I guess useful, for, or against ships, because ships get just a little bit of bonus damage versus buildings, so if you add extra armor, they just do so much less damage. Or I guess are just so much less useful. See if we can drive down that castle. God, I hate this scenario. It's not even worth it to take the rhinos. Why do these guys keep getting freaking stuck or something? What? Wait, why was the one... I don't know. I'm just here for the food. I guess the reason you have plenty of stone is because, you know, building a wonder is a lot of stone. Still, though, we are pretty well situated. The scores don't really mean anything, because they it's just them getting attributed a bajillion resources by themselves, which I'm pretty sure is, you know, in the triggers how to make a player have infinite resources in a scenario. I'm relatively sure that's how that works. I was like, why did this dock get destroyed? And then I remember that weird trebuchet that somehow got all, got all the way over there. I have way too much gold. Well, relative to everything else, and I lost my entire army here. And I'm getting attacked by the Lava Kingdom here. Whoops. I guess I could use some more docks. But honestly, what we can do is just uh, slowly creep towers over to the right-hand side, and then we'll be uh, dealing with the southern chom. I'd love a leap battle elephant, but I uh, don't have the resources for that yet. It is very expensive. I don't know, like, maybe part of the reason it feels so meaningless to have such a huge army in these scenarios, like, you know, at the beginning, is that because they have infinite resources, it's just, like, trying to snipe production buildings. It's not like, say, uh, Saladin IV, the Siege of Jerusalem, where you have a pretty big army to start with, and you, uh, what you should do is use that army to raid your opponents like crazy. Uh, that way, they'll be more manageable later on. Oh, wait, that ship has two HP. I, don't, I only need one. Oh, that's less than ideal. Oh, that's where all my gold miners are. Or, yeah, gold miners. It's almost like there's so much going on in this scenario, it's hard to, it's hard to keep track of everything. Oh, those guys are super dead. I mean, I guess our five relics plus uh, Sri Vijaya tribute is just giving us like all the gold income we could ever need. Okay, maybe I should build a mill over here. <laughs> That's getting a little too inefficient. Okay, finally, elite battle elephant.
Okay. What is this, take three? <laughs> Trying to get this relic that's all the way in the freaking corner of the map? That's not the right hockey group. really been bothered by the Khmer rebels much. They're one of the easier ones to kill because they just have two bases that are like across some rivers so you can just god damn it, trub them down. But you know, they're not they're not being too aggressive. Neither are the northern chum because they're the furthest away from us. Eventually the Vietnamese will offer to help us. And it's like you have to attribute them like 800 gold or something. God ah, damn it, I lost another one. I don't know. Chop some wood. As we very, very slowly get the resources we need <laughs> and the armies we need. to feel somewhat like less like a panic attack. Back to trubbing. Oh yeah, I should get siege engineers. Oh wait, I already got siege engineers. Man, I'm so forward thinking. Oh, Even Dash agrees. Yeah, just as long as I like have a few battle elephants here to kill rams. Or trubs, I suppose. Uh, I forgot to bring my elephants with me. Oh, they already have like a trub. Maybe we should just go for the archery range first. That might be smart. Yeah, they have like created elite battle elephant. One of these days I'll be able to get that relic. Yet San Song. Okay. So no more HCA production from them. Not that that's really the biggest thing in the world. Burmese HCA suck. <laughs> Still. Okay, now we're rolling in resources. Oh yeah, there's another relic right here. At least it spawns over here. But uh, in case you could not tell, it has been taken. Starring Liam Neeson and also the Lavo Kingdom. I think there's, like, one over here as well. There's also, I think, one over here. But La the Lava Kingdom has several at this point, for sure. And there go all my traps. Great. I guess I should get seed trams as well. That'd be smart. Yeah, there's definitely something, because the, the AI keeps on sending monks over. Anywho, let's start making our way westward. Didn't they say mineral resources were scarce on this map or something? It's like, resources for days. That was a big demo hit, and not in our favor. Maybe I should get some galleons. That would probably be smart. Dry dock might be decent. You know, basic water upgrades. Delegation has arrived, bearing 500 gold in tribute. Thanks, home slices. Thanks for not being all butthurt about the conquering you thing. So yeah, to get the relics, we need to take down the Lava Kingdom.
No, we never got a Harapunchai. Harapunchai. Rip. Send like a bunch more elephants there or something. Or some cat friends. <sighs> Sigh. Uh, what else do I need? I need to get another. F I need to get that relic on the island. Oh, my elephants are dead. This is hypothetically going well, though. Emphasis on hypothetically. Big emphasis on hypothetically. Got 4k stone in the bank. What I should be doing is just making literally infinite towers. Oh! There's another relic! Forget exactly where it spawns, but it's it's somewhere around the southern chum. I'm just going to assume one of my towers around here is gonna kill the monk. Oh yeah, come here get faith now. I forgot about that. Thanks, Sision. We wish to make war on the chunk. If you pay us 1,000 gold, we will be able to pursue this campaign. But we're already doing a campaign, isn't that the point of this video? <laughs> Don't tell me these units are... yep. Giant delegation has arrived, bearing 500 gold in tribute. Okay. Um. A bargain well struck. Our enemies are mustering as we speak. Yep. So now the Vietnamese will attack the uh, northern Cham, just from this base here. Oh God damn it! Pop's getting a little low for my taste, as is my gold income. Somehow I'm managing to turn through like 5,000 gold without accomplishing anything. This relic I'll take though. Ah, here's the relic I was telling you about. <laughs> Never be a monk in Orn lose empire. Really? They're all dead. Oh yeah, I also never defeated Red. <laughs> Holy crap, these guys make just so many... Uh... Chips. To the relic cave. Oh, hey, lots of gold here still. Yeah, I probably won't be able to get that relic. Um, Until I get rid of at least the docks of the charm. Oh, 
Okay. okay. Back to killing the Lava Kingdom. And ideally getting the relics. Oh my god, stop! Do I just need to go for the monasteries? Ugh. Finally have some siege units here. annoying and then one day I'll probably take out red I mean I suppose I could make something other than battle elephants and siege but I don't really know what would be better like scorpions would be terrible here is the problem because like it's all the units like are random stragglers, can't really get any good splash damage in. And I could use. How do I have no idle villagers? Madness. Just put a monastery over here. Thankfully, these guys aren't walled for whatever. Well, I mean, they are walled, but not well. <laughs> I think part of the problem is I keep on... The elephants keep on auto-targeting units as they're, you know, popping out of the buildings, so they never actually end up destroying any of the buildings. And because the, you know, it's AI micro, the units just constantly run away. It just takes too damn long to kill them before the next one pops out. Let's go for castle. Yeah, I don't think we've been attacked by the Khmer Rebels at all. At least not in any real way. Those are pop very slowly increases. Yeah, these guys had two relics. The one that starts over here, and the one that starts over here. How's Diviet doing? Well, at least they're occupying green. The two Chom enemies are probably the strongest on the map. Damn, these keeps only do three damage to our ten archers. This map has very few mineral resources, according to the game. Is it really just this one archery range? No, I guess there's a barracks somewhere. Yeah, there's that barracks too. I don't even think I have these things hotkeyed. Yeah, I think this is where the relic is, next to the Buddha statue. Yeah. 
上周。These guys. You have broken our armies, Suryavar. Bug. Lava is yours to command. Bug. Huzzah! Our first one down, technically. Let's, let's finish off red. Okay, now that we're... Oh, we have a big old navy now. I just don't have all my stables in one hotkey. The world may never know. Wait, you're dead! Don't you're you're literally resigned right now. Don't convert my shit, man! It's like the Avars all over again. Okay, I think. Oh god, I need to make another one, don't I? Someone in the comments will surely tell me how many uh, transport ships with a monk I've lost in this scenario. It is a number that will very surely be embarrassing. Yeah, I don't think these guys can actually defeat the Chom, but you know, they'll they'll give it their level best. And if nothing else, distract them, like I said. And really, are we really gonna lose water again? How many docks do these guys have? I am low on wood income. Oh wow, I lumberjacked out this whole area. God damn. Okay. After killing this one stable, I'm pretty sure that should be the end of Red. After kill uh, Oh, there we go. Well, it's clearly not my treatment of holy men that uh, brings you to your knees. But no, don't, don't go that way, monk. No. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. It's not safe to cross. Well, I guess that's what infinite resources will do for you. They just have every single production building constantly queuing up ships. Well, I mean, whatever that building makes. You guys get the idea. I do have surprisingly few idle units. Oh, walking right through the rebels. That's not smart. Whatever. Okay, that one's down. Definitely need more lumber dots. Okay, they have two more dots.
Okay, finally. I think we can get this relic. Yeah, I guess if you could get Cannon Galleons this mission, yeah, this mission would be too easy. You could just, you know, wipe out both Chum enemies from the water, and probably even sail up and kill the Khmer Rebels too. Only uh, the two Burmese players would be safe, but you only need to defeat three to win. I mean, I might win, because these guys might resign before the monk makes it back and I would have gotten all the relics, but, uh, you know. Finally, this, this ship is safe, so you guys get to get the idea if you're looking to get the achievement in this one. Where'd the ship go? Oh, awesome. Wait. I want to get the relic now. <laughs> now I actually want to get the relic. The world's hardest fought relic. Hooray! There isn't like a message or anything. That should be it. Coastal citadels. What citadels? Anyway, here is the map. Definitely one of the largest scenarios in terms of like you're just taking over all of Southeast Asia. I think it's probably the only scenario to feature all four Raja civilizations. And not just as like stand-ins for other players, but like legitimately like the two Burmese are actual Burmese, uh, Cham or Malay, that sort of thing. Anyway, here are the Northern Cham. Uh, they're based in Indrapura. They are, uh, like I said, the green and purple are definitely the, the strongest players on the map. The Khmer Rebels aren't that great, or they're not that strong. See, they just have two little bases right here. Same with red, but red is just really annoying. And then blue is to the west, but they don't even have a castle. I'm like, pretty sure. Pretty sure we got all the relics. Hegemony is a wonderful thing. The power and prestige of the Khmer Empire reached new levels under Suryavarman I, and all prospered. Despite being known as a great conqueror, Suryavarman was not simply a militaristic aggressor. His reign was marked by vast improvements in the general infrastructure of the empire, and an emphasis on religious toleration. He erected Practices that would be followed closely by Cambodian governments centuries later. His legacy Just kidding. Through these structures, the pride of our citizens, and the strength of the Khmer Empire. This legacy is a cause worth defending. It is this notion of greatness that you must invoke to electrify the minds of the common soldiery. All right, and that was Nirvana Pada. That's a pretty big KD. I guess we got 4,500 gold from Srivijaya. 
So I think there are nine relics on the map. I guess you can let me know in chat if... Not chat, the comments if I missed any, but I'm pretty sure I got all of them. Anyway, that will be... Our Khmer adventure concluded. I mean, it's going to be a long time before I record another campaign, as I will be in Germany. But I'm pretty sure our next one will be... El Cid. So... For you guys, it'll probably just be, like, the next day. But for me, it'll be a little while. So, uh, see you guys then.